selecting committees and what's the reason for that so please look through that also we'll bring you up to date where we are in our on some of our uh, funding with the state and some of our mandates <coughs> Michael, you, you're done? Okay. Before I get started, I'd just like to uh, do one more thing. We got a nice email from uh, a family telling how good our police department is, our te detective bureau, and what a great job they do in the city of Sheboygan. And I'd just like to share that with you and the, the community. Uh, they talk about one officer in here, and he said he... He wished we just say the whole detective bureau, not just pick out one officer, but uh, this detective did a marvelous job, and I think that everyone should know that. We do have an excellent police department in the city of Sheboygan, so. So you remember that. Okay, we'll call the notice of the 16th regular meeting to order. Pat, would you call the roll? Bowman? Here. Sorry? D. Berg? Here. E. Berg? Here. Doyle? Manny, Here. Moody, Here. Perez, Here. Ports, Here. Schultz, Here. Stephan, D. Van Akron, Excuse. T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Here. Wangelman, Here. Warner, Here. Wenninger. Here. 15 present. Corm's present. Alderman Van Akron's uh, wife, Nita, is back in a hospital, so Hopefully everything is, goes well. Alderman Van Akron, Terry. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I move that we accept the minutes of the previous meeting as entered on the record. Move it in second. We approve the minutes of the previous council meeting under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. We have with us this evening uh, Boy Scout Troop 872 from Our Savior Church. Uh, Casey Schmitz with them, the committee chairman. Dave Martin, Assistant Scoutmaster, and Gary Groshman. Grossheim. Grossheim, excuse me, Assistant Scoutmaster. So, uh, Scouts, would you come up and lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance, please? Excuse me. Thank you, Scout. I had the privilege of going to uh, some of their court of honors, and I think this is one Scout troop that has probably had the most eagles in the last year, year and a half, than any troop in the city. Excellent job. Good job, uh, leaders, and keep up the good work. And again, thanks, Scouts, for coming up. Okay, we have three hearings this evening. I'll read the three, and then if anyone wishing to be heard on any hearing, please step up to the microphone, give us your name, address, and uh, which one you want to speak on, one, two, or three. The first one is the rezoning property located at 1526 North Taylor Drive. The second one is established the use district classification for annexed property located on the southeast corner of Sunnyside Avenue and South 13th Street. And the third one is established a use district classification of annex property located on the east side of Hubert Circle, north of Eisner Avenue. Any interested parties wishing to be heard? Please step up to the microphone. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jim Mickelson, and I live at uh, 3226 Superior Avenue. And uh, regarding the hearing uh, 1533, the first hearing of this evening, Rezone property at uh, 1526 North Taylor Drive. I'm just curious, uh, I own property actually at uh, 3226 Superior Avenue, which is uh, actually the two backyards 
touch each other. And I was just wondering if the city at this point in time had any uh, uh, indication whether or not they're going to zone our property at that location, which is right alongside of it, or back to back, I should say. Okay. I talked to Steve here earlier, and he gave me some information. Okay, Tom, could you answer that, please, or Paulette? Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. I'm sorry. Yeah, I spoke to uh, Mr. Mixlin before the hearing, and it's not the city's intent at this point in time to rezone any of the property along Superior Avenue. What we're doing this evening is an applicant has made an application on a property that's zoned urban residential and they'd like to switch it to a suburban office, which is compatible with our comprehensive plan and staff is recommending approval. So with regards to Mr. Mickelson's case, it would be that typically it's an applicant who is submitting a proposal to the city. The city can do that, but typically it's up to the applicant to say, hey, this is something I'd like the city to consider. And at that time, staff and plan commission and council would review that and take action upon it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Sir. Hi. I'm Bill Novak, and I live at 3227 West Meadows Court, which is the condos right in to the north of the of, uh, 1526 North Taylor. Uh, we have a couple questions on that. First of all, uh, I, guess I think it'd be addressed to Tom. I, we understand there's no water and sewer in that property. Where would that be hooked up to? I guess it would be hooked up if it's available on Taylor Drive. They go into Taylor Drive to make their connections. Because we had problems with in back hooking up to our before. The other thing I have on the north side of this property which would be a south side of ours, there's a drainage ditch. And when the flood was here, if that drainage ditch were, wouldn't have been there, we would have water. So will that be stained, you know, or? Uh, you can, I suppose you can. I don't know what's planned to go in there. I haven't seen a site plan, but we will look at that when the time comes. Okay. So. And I guess the third thing on there that I have, I don't know if Mr. Pastor is in, uh, is on the north side of that property. Again, there's some nice evergreens <laughs> that are not hurting anybody. They could leave them. They'd be our our condo owners would really appreciate it. And I I don't think they're hurting anybody because they're a nice straight road right about on the line. So that's all I have. As far as the trees, Tom loves trees. You see a lot around Sheboygan, so they'll stay if possible. If they could, and that's what most it's mostly elderly people in there, and that's why we're representing the condo association. Uh, I'm I'm Dan Pastor, 3234. A West Meadows Court, the same condo complex. Oh, we got it. Uh, just at the spur of the moment, I, do we know what's going in there? Is uh, or is it just going to be rezoned now? Is it going to be a ten-story building, or uh, what's the limitations? Steve, please. At this point in time, there's just been some general conversations. Um, they're looking at it as a suburban office, and they, I would assume at this point in time, it'll probably be some type of office use. But until the property is zoned and the city actually has an application in hand, we really can't say it. So at tonight, we're just strictly rezoning the property from residential to suburban office. Um, and, but I would anticipate that if there is the change, that an application will probably be coming shortly. And at that time, point in time, obviously, staff would be able to let uh, the uh, public as well as the council know what is occurring there, our proposal. He's not going to go Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard on any of the three hearings? Anyone else? Alderman Van Akron. Move the hearings be closed. Moved and seconded a hearing be closed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Public form, Pam? Yes, Carl Table. Carl, you have five minutes. <laughs> Good evening, Carl. Good evening. Uh, Your Honor, Mayor Schramm, members of the council, Assemblymen elect Terry Van Akron, especially my aldermen, Bill and Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, tonight I would like to give several compliments and also suggestions for some possible future legislation. Mayor, thank you for the valiant battle 
with the issue of the state revenue sharing concerns that you worked with hard with the Alliance of Cities and the League of Municipalities. I'd like to thank you, the members of the council, for keeping the position of city clerk an elected position. Members of the council, you did the people's will when you awarded the ambulance contract to Orange Cross. I commend the fire chief, Mark Zeyer, for his professionalism exhibited with the fire department proposal and also Mike Warner for his diligence as committee chairman. This fall, you elected a new council member in Alderman Bonet's place. I ask that Assemblyman elect Terry Van Akron propose and work on the state level that our cities are allowed to have special elections by the people. Four people were interested in that position. An election by the people would have brought great interest into city government, no matter what the cost of election. But I do want to congratulate Alderman Manny, who was legally appointed under the st city st statutes. As a member of the council, I had proposed shorter contractual terms for department heads. As a team player, my proposal was not accepted. But noting the sudden departure of Jackie Jarvis breaking her five-year contract, I would ask that Ed Zurich and Chairman Don Van Akron bring forth legislation that if a department head breaks their contract, a certain fee be asked of that individual if they need to be released before the five-year contract is up. The Northside Traffic Study of the Sheboygan Press article August 2, 2002 states that there is no need for Taylor Drive extension. I ask this evening that the council would pursue under the council president Van Akron's leadership to initiate legislation here that all city land that is now held for Taylor extension be deeded to the proper Maywood and Evergreen parks. Regarding the 2003 budget and the dilemma that the mayor mentioned earlier on the state level, uh, Mr. Mayor and council members, all you have to do is go back to last fall when we had the Committee of the Whole and look at the lists that the members of the council brought in at the Committee of the Whole. An example, there is no reason for our city to be renting buildings when we own the Rice Building. Please review those cut lists from the council members last year. Regarding the badly needed new police station, your citizens are backing a new police station, but are very concerned of where it will be. I urge you to watch very carefully that you do not take valuable property off the tax roll. And the last item this evening, the South Pier Project. I wish you best wishes, all of you who are working with, best w uh, with the South Pier Project. But keep in mind that, that there is only one little road that goes in and out of that project. That is not a place for an athletic complex. So I again bid you, please keep the armory open and update it. And at this time, Mr. Mayor, I would like to give a presentation to you. Over the years, members of the council, I had the chance to go to the mayor and say to the mayor, I'm going to be in this country or that country as recent as July when I had a chance to visit Cuba. The mayor was always most gracious. And I can remember taking a pack of pencils into Cuba and what that meant to the Cuba people and the boys and girls who have so little. And so tonight, Mr. Mayor, in appreciation for your being the cheerleader for Sheboygan, I have a book that I'd like to present to you. Um, this fall, as Mike Warner asked, Carl, where have you been during the year? And I went through the list. Well, this fall I was at a political get-together in Plains, Georgia, and uh, President and Mrs. Carter were there, and President Carter signed his own book, uh, Jimmy Carter, Sources of Strength. And I know, Mayor, at times we have talked, and we've talked family, and your love for your parents and your children. I'd like you to have this personal copy, Jimmy Carter, Sources of Strength, which he autographed, and I have a picture to vouch. Mr. Mayor.
Thank you, Carl. That was very kind of you. Okay. Can't talk that. Can't talk no, that. No. You're right. No more. <laughs> but, uh, the, I didn't count the presentation. That was two minutes. Otherwise, you were five minutes. You, you were good. Did a good job. That it for public forum? Yes, sir. Okay. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. On the consent agenda, I would move that all ROs be accepted and filed, all committee reports be accepted and adopted, all resolutions and general ordinances be put upon their passage. Moved and seconded that all ROs be accepted and filed, RCs be accepted and adopted, resolutions and ordinances be put upon their passage. That is 16-1 through 16-18. Alderman Moody. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, no need to pull it, just a question on 16.7. It says, directing a public hearing to change the text of the zoning ordinance to permit indoor commercial entertainment. What do they mean by indoor commercial entertainment? Is there anything specific? We were wondering that ourselves. <laughs> Steve? Is that a Steve question? Steve? On, on 16.7, it's a resolution by Alderman Warner directing a public hearing to change the text of the zoning ordinance to permit indoor commercial entertainment as a conditional use. Are you, are you just looking for a... Explanation, yeah. Alderman Moody. What kind of entertainment? What, um, what we've come, uh, what staff is doing in this particular case is we've had an application submitted to us. Um, there is a group, a uh, martial arts group, looking to do... Uh, some martial arts in an urban industrial zone. Uh, indoor commercial entertainment, which would include taverns, restaurants, studios, martial arts, um, it, all, all the different types of indoor commercial uh, uses aren't, per, aren't presently permitted in the urban industrial zone. So what staff is suggesting is to uh, allow for a commercial, uh, to conditionally allow for indoor commercial entertainment uses in the in the industrial or in the industrial urban industrial zone. Presently, in the suburban industrial zone, uh, the indoor commercial entertainment uses are conditionally permitted. So, what we're proposing is to have this conditionally allowed in the urban industrial and therefore this applicant who is interested in this martial arts studio can make a conditional use application and possibly have that use um, conditionally permitted in the urban industrial zone. So if there's any other type of entertainment in this urban, urban industrial, each one would have to apply? That's correct. And, and, and you're right. That's anywhere from... Something that's already there? I'm, I'm sorry? Even if it's identical to something that's already there, like you're saying martial arts now, if another martial arts group wanted to come in? If, a, if there is a provision in, in our ordinance as far as a conditional use that if a use has not discontinued for 365 days that that use can continue. So if there was a martial arts mm -hmm. that wanted to come in and it was 265 days since the last time the other one it was used, it could continue. However, if that 365 days expired, then a new conditional, applica uh, conditional use application would have to be okay. submitted. And this is urban industrial, like in the industrial park? Um, our industrial parks, I believe, are suburban industrial, which presently have this as a okay. conditional use. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> Are there any other questions? If not, would you call the roll, please, Pat? D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Ports, Aye. Schultz, Aye. Stephan, T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Weninger. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. Bauman. Aye. 15 eyes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Motion still carried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't done that since Fred Arkey. <laughs> 1619 will I, to be referred. 1620 will hold for 1627. Alderman Berg. Uh, yes, if I could take both of those and ask for suspension of the rules. On 1620 and 1627. We're not there yet. We'll get there. Hang on. We'll get there. We're, 16, 25, 21, and 22 lie over? Two. Two, November. Two, 11, 25, correct. 16, 23 lies over. 
1624 through 26 to be referred. Now 1627 along with 1620 by Alderman Berg, authorizing entering into contract for the bulkhead re reconstruction Harbor Center, South Pier District. Alderman Berg. Uh, thank you. I wanted to give Alderman Ben Ackman a fair warning of the uh, rules for suspension of the rules. Uh, requesting suspension of the rules on, uh, on these two documents. Moved and second for suspension. Is there any objections? Hearing none, proceed. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I think we're looking at suspension. Uh, the uh, bids for this particular project need to be in Madison by uh, uh, the 27th of this month. If we don't have suspension, we'd be calling a special council meeting to approve. This is attendant to our receiving a uh, no interest loan from the Department of Natural Resources. Uh, you will note the bids came in very, very favorable. We're at a one point uh, seven million uh, dollar uh, seawall construction, which really will go from South Pier all the way up uh, uh, to the capsule property on the river. Uh, uh, if they start now, I believe that they could be completed by spring. Uh, summer. By summer, <laughs> and uh, I believe that uh, situation is such that they can also work through the winter, so uh, I would uh, uh, ask for the council's approval on same. Okay, there's a motion before us to that the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman, I heard of Alderman Van Akron. One, one other quick comment. I did talk to Tom earlier this week, so I knew this was coming, and seeing we have the deadline, the suspension made a lot of sense. Also, I believe we had budgeted $2.3 million for this project, so the fact that it's coming in at one6 I'll suspend almost anything if we can save uh, half a million dollars on it, so. I'll remember that. <laughs> almost. If there's another discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Eberg. Aye. Doyle. Aye. Manny. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Aye. Quartz. Aye. Schultz. Aye. Stephan. Aye. T. Van Agren. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Weininger. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. 15 eyes. Motion carried. 1628 will lie over. 1629 through 34 to be referred. 1635 and 36 lies over. 1637 to be referred. 1532, along with 1568, an RO by City Plan Commission recommending approving the naming of the frontage road in Washington Square as South Business Drive 2. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Can, can I take them both together? Please. And I would uh, make a motion we accept and file the ROs and pass the attached ordinance. Second. Moved and second that we accept and file the ROs and pass the general ordinance under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. RO number 328-0203 and General Ordinance 46-0203 is relative to establishing the use district classification of annexed property located on the southeast corner of Sunnyside Avenue and South 13th Street and as Class SR3 Suburban Residential, which matches with the area. Do I have the right one? Uh, Pat's we're, looking here. We're only on the uh, RO and the ordinance for Washington okay. Square. Did you want to include the next two documents with it? Yes. 33 and 34? Yes. Oh, you didn't, and 35? You didn't yes. mention that. Okay. And I was reading 1534 first. Oh, we got 33, 34, and 35. I'm going to have to go backwards to 33. And then make a new <laughs> motion, please. A new motion? Well, you, you, didn't, you didn't include these three. I meant all three documents. So, I make a motion to accept. <laughs> Uh, that we're, we're talking okay. in the <laughs> Iowa officer for 1533, 1534, and 1535 and pass the attached ordinances. Very good. Cool. Okay. Okay. Alderman Warner, proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, document number 1533, RO number 3270203, is relative to rezoning the property located at 1526 North Taylor Drive from Class UR Suburban Residential to Class Suburban Office Classification. Mm -hmm. This will change uh, the zoning of the property, Your Honor, to suburban office, keeping it in line with the uh, city's future plans. Document 1534, which is RO number 3280203, is establishing the use district classification of annex property located on the southeast corner of Sunnyside Avenue and South 13th Street is Class SR3 Suburban Residential. The Plan Commission recommends this classification as it is the same as the surrounding city residences. 
document 1535 general ordinance or I should say RO number 329-0203 general ordinance 47-0203 is relative to establishing the use district classification of annex property located on the east side of Hubert Circle north of Eisner Avenue as class SR5 suburban residential in keeping with the surrounding neighborhood and the plan commission recommends approval on that also thank you okay is there any discussion Alderman Doyle. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I'm not big into naming streets or anything like that, but uh, I'd just like to hear the rationale because it seems to me like that's sort of a, going to be a confusing thing. Why, I'm wondering why they didn't give it an original name of its own instead of uh, putting this Roman numeral after. All that, please. The rationale behind um, the naming of the street was, I think there was, and, and Tom can probably add to this, in the Washington Square Shopping Center, there is a uh, mailbox, et cetera, and I think they have about 1,000 boxes with an address of South Business Drive. And so that was the rationale be behind South Business Drive 2 was to keep the name and name it too. And it went to, it was, I think, discussed intensely. And then there were, the last meeting that was held was with the fire chief, the police chief, and I think director of public works and some engineering staff and the developer for that property. And they came to the conclusion that South Business Drive 2 would work. The police department, in the case of emergency as well as fire, would be able to locate those businesses in the shopping district. And then it went to plan commission and plan commission recommended the naming of the street. Okay. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this was discussed in plan commission and actually I can remember our previous uh, director of city development bringing this forward just over a year ago and there were a lot of issues involved with the businesses. Uh, it, this has been a lengthy process to come up with an acceptable name and has been in the works for over a year. There are several issues that impact the naming of this frontage road. The businesses that are located there have a vested interest because of thousands of dollars invested in stationery, business cards, and advertising dollars. The emergency services, police, fire, and ambulance, as well as building inspection have been involved in this process also. Emergency response is extremely dependent on the accuracy of an address, but by naming this frontage road South Business Drive 2, there will be no doubt about the location of an incident requiring emergency service. It is very important that this change be approved. Does anyone remember what the property that Washington Square now sits on looked like before the present development? A sprawling brownfield, oil tanks, piles of tires, litter strewn acres of useless property. An eyesore on one of the city's southern entrances. We now have the flagship store of fresh brand foods. Who doesn't know the phrase shop the pig? Bookstores, coffee shops, and a new and modern Walgreens store, Community Bank and others have made a commitment to this once dilapidated area of our city. They have all been involved in the naming of this frontage road. Although I do not adhere to the one size fits all belief in most issues, we, we already have set similar standards for the naming of streets. And I would add that these constraints that we use have been used before and, and we can see it right on Cole Memorial Drive where we have Kohler Memorial Drive Frontage Road. These locations are well defined, South Business Drive and South Business Drive 2. We'll give the same distinction to the businesses located there. We should not stand in the way of this compromise and that's what it is. This is just too important. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Another thing that's driving this is all of those businesses are on the west side of Business 42. All the numbers are used up, all of the even numbers are used up. Uh, and there's no, it, they can't be uh, odd and even numbers uh, because they're both on the west side. Uh, so they had to come up with either another street name or some other method of, of identifying the buildings that are um, being built to the east of the existing uh, ones that are built on the west end of the property, if that makes sense. But anyway, they're, uh, they're because they're both on the west side of the of business 42, uh, they had to have come up with another way of identifying them. Correct. You were on a plan commission when this started, I think, Alderman That Jones. is correct. Alderman Moody. Well, 
Thank you, Your Honor. Did anyone discuss the possibility of having the same, um, same not house number, but you know, um, business number as business drive two and business drive? Is that possible? Probably not, huh? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're asking. Is Paulette or Tom? Is it possible? You're asking if you could have the same number for South Business yeah. Drive and South Business Drive 2? Right. Yes. Right. Is it, it's possible. Yes. But we have the situation that we have Quill Memorial Drive, then right south we have Quill Memorial Place. Mm -hmm. We have like South 17th Street or South 17th Place. It's in line with what we've done. And that doesn't get confusing for people who may have to call in the, in the emergency? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Okay, that would be the only concern I had. Okay, thank yeah, you. Thank you. <coughs> Just another discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. T. Van Akron? Vanderweel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weniger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Thank you. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1553 by Alderman T. Van Akron, Perez, Schultz, and Doyle transferring appropriations in the 2002 budget. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to take 1554 and 1555. All three are transfers in the budgets. 1554 being a transfer of funds to provide monies to establish an estimated revenue and appropriations for federal subsidy for bus purchases. And 1555 is authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2000 budget. I'd move that all three resolutions be put upon their passage. Moved and seconded that the three resolutions be put upon their passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Hortz? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weniger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1573 RC by Public Protection and Safety recommending filing communication from the Sheboygan Clinic requesting removal of the parking sign on North 25th Street next to the clinic employee parking lot and passing the attached ordinance. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion we accept and file the report of the committee and pass the attached ordinance. You want to take, take the next one? That take. would be 1564. Right. On that, I make a motion we accept and file the report of committee also and pass the attached ordinance. Been moved and seconded that we accept and file the RCs and pass the ordinances under discussion. Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Your Honor. The Public Protection and Safety Committee for Document 1573 discussed the traffic safety issues on North 25th Street with Mr. Merzberger of the Sheboygan Clinic at our October 30th meeting. The Police Department's Traffic Division reviewed the area and brought forth the recommended changes. There is a small strip of on street parking on the west side of the street that will be added to the no parking stopping or standing regulations. The east side of the street is already designated as such and this will make, make both sides the same uh, up to about where the fire station is beyond that they can park on either side. And in document 1564 this is in response to a request from Cindy here regarding the intersections of North 11th Street and North 12th Street with Grand Avenue. Grand Avenue is the street that borders North High School to the north. These two intersections are presently uncontrolled with no stop signs or yield signs on them at all. And it is our recommendation as a committee to add stop signs on 11th and 12th Street at their intersection with Grand Avenue. We always take extra precaution when we look at intersections around our schools and many urban middle school students use these interse intersections as well as North High School students and your Public Protection and Safety Committee recommends passage. Thank you. There's no other discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. T. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. 1638 will lie over. 1639 goes to Public Works. 1640 and 41 lie over. 
1642, Public Works. 1643, go to Public Works. Steve? 1644 is a resolution authorizing signing easements for many storm sewer to be constructed in portions of various properties. Public Works. <laughs> Should be a couple more there. Did I staple them together? No, they're all clipped. All right, 1645 is communication from James Schlegel of Sheboygan Area Great Lakes Sports Fisherman requesting removal of the two-hour parking restrictions along the riverfront boardwalk. Public protection and safety. And 1646 is a communication from Ron Seafelt relative to the condition of the property at 1611 North 15th Street. That will go to public protection and safety. Okay. Motions before us, seconded to adjourn. Before we adjourn next Monday night, seven o'clock, special council meeting on a budget. Everyone be here at seven o'clock next Monday night. For, it's for the hearing. We have to hold the hearing for the budget. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed?